Hey everyone, Jeremy Siskin here. I am the author of this book, Playing Solo Jazz Piano. I can never figure out how to do this. Um, I have a copy right here. Why do I need to point? Look, it's real. This could be yours, this very one. Go to my website, I'll sign one for you. I'll ship it out. You'll be supporting me. You'll be my new favorite person. Um, so today's video is called Fingering Moves for Improv. And I created this video because I noticed some uh, students in particular, as they were improvising, you can see my hand now on the overhead cam, uh, one of their biggest problems turns out to be fingering. And if you think about it, it makes sense. You know, as we learn how to play the piano, we're told every single fingering that we should do. You know, it's all written into the book or our teacher drills us on it. But when we're improvising, it's our job to come up with our fingering. So I had a lot of students playing improvisations that sounded kind of like this. same position in the middle of the piano. Yes, I'm going up a little bit, down a little bit, but if that hand is staying in the same position, how much variety are we ever really going to be able to have in music, right? If you play even the easiest of, let's say, the Mozart sonatas or the Bach inventions, you're going to have to be doing more with your hand. So sometimes uh, for certain students, or maybe, you know, this could be a good explanation for you no matter what your level, it's really important to actually think about what is your fingering going to be at the instrument and what new sorts of fingerings might you use. So I'm going to show you uh, four fingerings as well as a, um, a game that you could play to help with that. So the first, you know, kind of really general rule is avoid what I'll call the crab. And that's what I just demonstrated, which is that, you know, you start basically in what we call a five finger position, which means one finger per white key, basically. Um, and then you basically move laterally. This means that you're never really going to have interesting intervals. Uh, you're going to kind of just be in the same place in the piano all the time. So the first thing, this is probably obvious, but you'd be amazed how many even good pianists as they're starting to improvise and learn jazz don't think about this, which is crossing over and crossing under. Of course, we do this when we play our scales, um, but it is completely useful and necessary in improvisation as well. This is a little lick. Uh, I stole this from a great saxophonist named Lanny Morgan um, over a 251, which you could practice for crossing over, crossing under. All right, so this is good for crossing under. Of course, you want to practice crossing over. You can come up with your own scalar lick um, to use there. Um, one of the things that's interesting is that I've been told that some of the really great jazz pianists, including Wynton and Kelly, use their thumb a heck of a lot more than other pianists. Um, in fact, I'm told that when Kelly barely used his fourth and fifth fingers, that he mainly played with fingers one, two, and three. Um, and I think there's two great things about this. The first is that it gives you kind of, the thumb gives you a natural swing feel. Because it's different than the other fingers. It's a different size and shape, right? Um, the other thing uh, is that from the thumb, if I play this thumb on C, look at how far I can go this direction and how far I can go this direction. I have the most flexibility from the thumb. So um, we actually do want to use our thumb quite a lot, and I'm going to show you an exercise at the end. Um, but let me just demonstrate, not that you need it, a little bit of crossing over, crossing under. And ask yourself, as you cross over, which finger are you crossing over to? In our scales, we know that we often cross over on four or three. What I often see uh, beginning jazz musicians doing, and even some good ones, is crossing over on their two. Which just means you're going to have to keep crossing over, and that's going to be difficult to sustain at fast tempos. Um, second hand position fingering move is expand and contract, right? This is something that our hand can do like a, well, I don't know, like a snake. We can go from this five finger position all the way out, and we can get into a new position here, right? And we can do this going this way or we could do it going back this way. So we want to cr climb across the keyboard this way, and we want to keep our hand in this expanded position because we can get this kind of large leap, different sorts of intervals. If you watch my video on uh, bebop melodies, you know that leaps create rhythm, right? <laughs> Also expressive. 
Um, and what I've written out for you, if you're looking, this is the beginning of Somewhere Over the Rainbow. This is such a great example of expand, contract. Expand, it's an expressive leap, it's a beautiful octave. And look, now I'm in a new hand position. So you could practice, you know, you could go up, circle of this. And don't forget that you can also do the same thing going down. Let's see, it would be. exercise to get yourself to practice expanding and contracting your hand. Third one is what I call arpeggio position, right? And so this is instead of being in five finger position with one finger on each white key, you would spread it out and have one finger on every other white key. And we love being in arpeggio position in jazz, right? Because arpeggios are such a key part of bebop vocabulary. specific arpeggio position that we're frequently in is with our thumb on the third of the chord. So you know, if I'm on C major, we love having our thumb on this E. So I can play the third, fifth, seventh, and ninth. So here's um, a little lick I love teaching my beginning students, which uses arpeggio position. So my hand's kind of having to stay pretty open the whole time. And here I, I'm also crossing over. So you want to make sure to expand your hand into that mode where you're on just every other key. And that way you're going to have all your chord tones right under your fingers, literally. All right, number four is to start crossed over. It almost looks like star-crossed lovers. Start crossed over. Um, this is a lick that I teach to many beginning students. Um, so if you look at my hand, we don't always have to have the thumb on bottom. Frequently, the thumb's going to actually be under the hand. So um, I always like giving this to my beginning students because they'll often try to play it starting with the thumb, and it just is so awkward. So what you want to do for this lick is you want to start with your second finger beneath your thumb. And look at what I have to do. I have to have my thumb crossed under here as well. So your thumb is often kind of going to be underneath your hand. Here's another lick. I didn't write it out. I'll write it out for you right now because I'm just feeling footloose and fancy free. Here's a lick or kind of a phrase I often teach my students, which is kind of surrounding the keynotes of a chord with neighbor tones. And the way that I would figure this is 4 3 2 1, 4 3 2 1, 4 3 2 1. So. This is the Rondo a la Turk lick. Right? So the way that I finger this, I'm not sure how well you can see, but I have my thumb under my hand, and then I'm going four, three, two, one. Now I can expand the hand up. Four, three, two, one. Expand the hand up. Four, three, two, one. So here again, I'm not sure if I would say it's starting crossed over, but I have the thumb beneath the hand. So besides just kind of improvising and focusing on each one of those hand positions or fingering kind of tricks, um, you can also play a game using finger limitations. I told you that when Kelly often only uses just first three fingers, and I like using, practicing playing legato, um, using just some combination of my thumb and one other finger. So um, I'm going to improvise on blues using just my first two fingers here, almost chopsticks, but it shouldn't sound like chopsticks. Alright, so that's just using two fingers. I don't know how well you can see it or not. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna go to this view where you can see things a little bit better. And now I'm going to try using just one and three.
uncomfortable um, or you know less common fingerings that you can practice so that you get your hand into some new and interesting positions. So um, again, I hope that you enjoyed that. My name is Jeremy Siskin. This is my book, Playing Solo Jazz Piano. I appreciate it so much when people buy it directly from me on my website. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you soon.